Oof. Um, is it the players? I suppose it is. You have to blame the players for being naive enough and um, sort of gullible enough to A, think they can get away with it and B, take that risk. But when you look at the players, um, barring one, one, really, they're quite, they're quite lower league players, you know, they're, they're from the lower echelons of the English game. Um, you know, you're thinking, as we touched on earlier, that you know the the the, the rich, fa- the vast fortunes at the top aren't always the same as it, as you filter down. So obviously, you know there is players out there who um, need to sort of make ends meet, or would be susceptible to someone offering them a, a, a sum of money to to do something illegal. Um, and it's difficult at the minute to talk about it because people haven't been found guilty of it. There's people being arrested and questioned, but no one's been found guilty. The problem for me lies on the fact that um, I would blame the, some of the betting companies. I mean, f- you have to. If you make a market for these silly markets like yellow cards, corners, throw-ins, all this kind of stuff, then people are gonna. You're always gonna entice people into making. A quick few quid, or you know, realistically, if someone's betting on corners or yellow cards throwing, then it says here it's not normal. I mean, the British culture is I love a cup footy coupon on a Saturday, you know, or first goal score if you go and watch a match, or you know, correct score, you know, Champions League game, or you know, we all love that as part and parcel of it's part and parcel of the culture, and I think that's a great thing. I think that's something that you know gives people passion, you know, to have a vested interest in the in the outcome of a game, whether you go to a match as a QPR half and you want Charlie Austin one 0 which relatively seems to be a good bet this season. I think that's fine because there's so many variables. I mean it's that's diff- very, very difficult for someone to fix. But if you ask someone to get a yellow card and you can pick selective you know, I can say, you know, I'm gonna get booked today. Well, that's a quite an easy market to manipulate, you know, it's not really difficult to manipulate that, but the result of a game you obviously have to corrupt more than one person, or you have to. It has to be a, a big effort, and you know. For me, if you take their markets out, you take these silly markets out. Because I'm, I'm surmising that. Not many people really, you know. If you ask these betting companies, I don't think many. They don't make the vast amount of their fortune through that. Most of it will be on trebles or roll ups or coupons or first goal scorer or a correct score. They won't be on yellow cards or throw ins or number of corners. I mean. If you, I think if you, it's, it's like race horsing. I think there's a little bit of a problem with race horsing. You didn't, you had a bit of fixing maybe that went on before, but it's difficult if you've got twenty horses in a race to fix who's going to win. You know, there's only one horse that can win. There's nineteen losers. Once you're able to bet on a horse to lose a race, then you open it up to a, to to the world of corruption. If you can go, on, I mean, you can go on Betfair now and lay horses, so you don't even have to pick a winner. You, know, you can actually pick a. You can go through and pick a horse that's not going to win a race. It obviously opens up a whole different world to people stopping horses, people doing things untoward against the the principles of the sport. You know, cricket with the bowling ball, no balls. I mean, you know, all manner of things. I think once you have these silly markets, once the betting companies open up these silly markets, um, I think they open it up to it not being uh, always. Ethically correct. I think if you take Especially these marks, you know, on addiction as well. And who yeah, I mean, you know, the, it's generally probably vulnerable. You know, I don't know who's been caught, and they're obviously really gullible and really stupid. But also, they're probably vulnerable. They probably have overspent or live beyond the means, and you know, either they got greedy and decided it's, it's a way to make a quick few quid or whatever. And you know, it's difficult to judge them because a they haven't been found guilty, and b you've got to walk in someone's shoes, I believe, before you can start criticising them. But I think if you take away these stupid markets. You know, it's it, someone was telling me about the amount of money that's bet on English games in the Far East. I mean, preposterous. You know what I mean? It's it it, it for them to bribe lower league English players. It's relatively cheap in terms of the financial sums you can make. So, whilst these markets exist and whilst it is a way for people to make money from it, you know they're gonna try and exploit it. Um, I think. The first thing we need, you know, is the players, and it's a small minority of players that have done it. You know that I mean that should never happen. No player should happen, and it's no coincidence. It's not really top top players. You know, it's not players who are earning the big money at the top. I mean, they have no, they 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 have no vested interest in in corrupting a game. I mean, it's not worth it for for what they would get from it. You know, what they 
choose to risk. But as you go down the leagues, obviously the fact that some people have allegedly done it says that it is. I don't it's know. This, them, oh, is that what's happened? Yeah, I, I, I actually don't know. And there was a case of it a while back. I think you know it's it's something I feel that will always be there. There'll always be someone like in anything. There'll always be someone who's wanting to bend the rules a little bit or break the rules for a short term financial gain. There will always be someone who's vulnerable to that. Whilst these markets exist, I think if you take these markets out, then. You know, it's like saying, you know, if you take drugs out of the equation and you don't have a drug, no one with drug addiction, you know what I mean? You just wouldn't have it. But the fact that drugs are there means that someone's going to do it. Um, and it's a lot more complicated than the betting side of it because, you know, it's generally the betting companies who go to the authorities and say, oh, there's a regular betting pattern. We'll just take the betting market out. Stop giving them the opportunity to to corrupt the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a chicken or egg situation, I suppose, in some people's minds. My... Thing would be just take the stupid betting markets out and you'd probably negate half the problems that you come across.